Well, welcome to Cover 2 TV. I'm Chris Pajak, that's Steve Hall, and this is our Q&A show. Next week, we'll be doing free agency predictions, but today we have asked for your questions on Twitter and Facebook, and we have got some questions to go through. So the first one is from at Michael Oliver on Twitter. Um, interesting question, a very good question, actually. Most likely team to go from worst to first in a division, Steve Hall. Yeah, I've come up with three. Um, I'm going to narrow it down to these three and then make a prediction at the end. I've gone for Houston Texans, okay. who I think are far better than you know four and twelve records. I think the injuries absolutely killed them. So if Watson and Watts and Merciless all come back, you know that's a, that's some team that they've got there in a pretty you know a pretty weak division. I don't think a, a fully healthy Texans are that much different than say the Jaguars who won that division. Yeah. Um, second, they've got the Denver Broncos. Um, Again, I don't think the AFC West is particularly brilliant. I don't think it's that good. And if they can get a quarterback, it all depends on that. So someone maybe, if they get a Kirk Cousins or they draft one of the star quarterbacks, I could easily see them going. They've never had two losing seasons on a row since like the 70s. So they'll be doing all they can. John Elway would have been embarrassed by last year wouldn't he, of, of what went down there. And if the third one, I've gone for the San Francisco 49ers just because... Again, I mean, that's a tough division. Seattle and I think Arizona will be good, and obviously the Rams are good. But Jimmy Garoppolo's never lost a game. The, no. yeah. we, see, we saw Kyle Shanahan's offense destroy the league for Atlanta. And at the end of last season, it was starting to look a bit like that again. So they're the three I've got now, and I'm going to probably have to make a decision. Okay, well, I picked two teams. I picked the uh, Broncos and the 49ers. Uh, very similar reasons, I think. The Broncos have still got the crux of that defence that yep. they can lean on, that championship winning defence. So uh, theirs is clearly based on the fact that if they get a quarterback in, I expect our way to use free agency probably to do that. Um, I think we've seen with the signing of Peyton Manning a few years ago that he's not afraid to go out and get a quarterback for one, maybe two years. Um, I'd be very surprised if they didn't look at the quarterback position in the future as well in the draft. Uh, I think they'll be they'll be looking to get stock, stacked in that position because listen, Lynch and that just aren't good enough at the moment. So for me, with the Chiefs, Chargers, and Raiders in their division, the Broncos will probably be the one that I've got a really good shot at it. And then equally the 49ers. Um, but the Rams are obviously the one that you maybe think to yourself, actually, with another year, yep. Jared Goff in that offense and Sean McVay to have another year of experience just under got, him. Just got Marcus Peters at cornerback. Uh, yeah, they're going to be good. With all that being said then, I think I'm going to go Houston. Okay. I think if you... If, it, it, again, it depends on health. If J.J. Watts himself and if Deshaun Watts himself, I think they'll win that division. Again, uh, and got, obviously the, the issue they've got is... Usually when you have a really bad season, you have a high draft pick to go and use. They traded theirs away. Now, don't get me wrong, they won't, be, they won't care because mm. it was for Deshaun Watson and look who he was. But if they can get healthy, then I think they're better than Jacksonville, so I'm probably going to go with them. Okay, there you go then. So Steve picks the Texans, I'll pick the Broncos. Second question from Hulbert Joe, or just let's just call him Joe because that's his name. What do you think of Pete Carroll's strategy to regress to old-style football this year? Wants to go run heavy and run cover three on every play with Ken Norton as his defensive coordinator, Steve. Yeah, uh, I know Joe's a Seattle fan and I think we've had a, I've actually spoke a bit with him about it. I think it makes sense to go back to what you know that's what Seattle were and it worked well for them. I think that, that offence suits Russell Wilson. Mm. I think he's brilliant, don't get me wrong, I say all the time on this show how good I think he is, but I think he suits a run-first offence, not a pass-first offence. I think it helps him, I think he can get involved with his legs a little bit more as well. I think it keeps teams honest, you know, if they stack the box against them, then it makes those throws a bit more easier for him. The issue that they've got is they're going to have to find a running back. Mm. You know, Mike Davis, Thomas Rawls, Chris Carson, CJ, CJ Procyes, They've all shown little bits. And I think, actually, at the end of the season, Carson looked pretty good. Um, and they've got McKinnon as well. I just think none of those, for me, are... They're not Marshawn Lynch. The no. reason it worked with Lynch is because he was Marshawn Lynch and he was, you know, he was beast mode. Can you go and find someone like that? Um, again, it's a very, very good running back class in the draft. So you might be able to go and pick someone up. Second, third round. Look what Alvin Kamara and Kareem Hunt did for their respective teams' mid-round picks. And as for rolling cover three, then I think that makes sense because that's what that's what the Seattle's based on. That's what they do, you know. Provided no one's lost a step, which that could be debatable. You know, Cam's Chancellor is very much injured, but in Thomas, I think Sherman, although declining, isn't you know, by all means nowhere near finished. So that would make sense for them to go back to doing that more. They just have to find themselves a running back who, who can who can carry them like Lynch did. Yeah, I mean the, the one thing that sort of 
the, uh, one of the reasons that I think they might go obviously towards this is the teams in the division. You know, you've got the Cardinals, you've got the Rams, and you've got the 49ers. And I think if you went run heavy against those teams, you might have a little bit of success. And you've got to win your division first and foremost. Yep. But like you, you do have to have the running back to be able to do it. Like what, what you were saying, and so, sort of maybe to expand on it a little bit. I think it is important for the Seahawks to find that running back because Russell Wilson's the best quarterback in the league when the plays are broken down. And, you know, when. And it's not that you're hoping for a designed run to break down, of course you're not, but when everybody's playing the run, it makes it a lot easier for Russell Wilson, doesn't it? And it opens that playbook up a little bit more. And what we saw too often last season was him having to bootleg out of drop back passes. And that's not what Russell Wilson is. Russell Wilson's a guy who can scramble into those situations, but it shouldn't be designed every single time. He was too many it? times when he was running backwards towards his own goal. Yeah, the, his own end zone. The, the 17, 18 yard sacks were killing them. Uh, and it's because line, if you can freeze your linebackers for a second because they're worried about the run, Russell Wilson only needs a second. And if he, get, if he gets to the edge, he can beat most linebackers to the edge. But if they're expecting the pass and they're expecting him and they're spying him because they don't respect your running game, then he's, like I say, he's going to get caught. And like, I, again, I, I agree with you. I think the last thing you need is Russell Wilson running a bootleg and before and faking a handoff, and no one respects the handoff. If, if, I would, I would, if I'm defending them with this set of running backs I've mentioned before, I would say, you know what? You, you can beat us with them. Try and beat us exactly, with them. Exactly. If I'm defending, I'd say, even if he's faking the handoff, go towards him, and then we'll stop the running back. But if it's when it was someone like Marshawn Lynch, you couldn't do that, because it one-on-one -on -one against anybody, he, was, he would just you run the ball. You needed to have eight in the box for Marshawn Lynch. Exactly. So every single if time. they can find the running back, I think Seattle are a million miles away. They're a very good team. I just think the new defensive coordinator is going to affect things. Do you think it's very much uh, this? Listen, this is the way that we're going to be running it, and you're here to execute. Yeah, I think Pete Carroll will tell him what to do. I don't think it's a bit like uh, Matt Patricia running Bill Belichick's defense. Yeah. It was Bill Belichick's defense. It should be Pete Carroll's defense. He's got the you know the stripes on the wall. So, I I think it would be, make sense to go cover three and just be you know say we're Seattle. This is what we do. Beat us, and it worked for a lot. If you can just add you know top it up a little bit, they probably could do with another pass rush defensive tackle wise. Uh, whether they bring Sheldon Richardson back, we'll see. But other than that, you know, they've got the best linebacker or one of in the league. They've got the best safety in the league. So why wouldn't you go back to what helped? You know, you, you won a Super Bowl and you got to a Super Bowl using that tactics. If you can just top it up a little bit and say, say find the running back, then why would you change? Yeah, okay. So we'll move on then. At LFC Callum, uh, LF Callum, sorry, mm -hmm. but nicely, nice use of the letters LFC. Mm -hmm. uh, what a catch. No idea. No idea. Um, at WC Lot Junior, Walter Corney, why are the Vikings trying to clear out the course back room? I'll, I'll you, tell you, what, yeah, you have this one. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. I think we've obviously, <laughs> we've obviously, we're, on, we're obviously in a really strange situation at the moment, aren't we? We've got three quarterbacks all out of contract at the moment, and uh, I think Blake Bortles probably re-signing with the Jags has made the Cousins trade a little, or the Cousins signing a little bit more of a thing. I think it, it obviously it's one less team to go in with. Um, Jeno made some great points last week about Nixon Cousins is better than all of them. And it would send shockwaves, I believe, if the Vikings were to go for Kirk Cousins. I don't think they'll get rid of all three of them. I do think there'll be a piece of ex uh, one experienced quarterback still in that room. Whether you could afford to have someone like a Teddy Bridgewater in there and pay Kirk Cousins what he's going to be paid, I'm not 100% sure. I think if the Vikings were to do a deal with Kirk Cousins, you're probably looking at around the £54 million mark. Um, maybe 50 million guaranteed of a 90 million overall four year deal or something. I don't think the Vikings could go to maybe a five year deal. Um, it's a strange one. I'm with obviously, uh, is it the Filippo, who's the new offensive coordinator? He will trust that he can get the best out of any quarterback that he's got, and I don't think the Vikings are probably as worried as Vikings fans. Yeah, I said last week on the show, I think it's ultimately going to end up with it being Teddy Bridgewater starting or being you know, at least being in the building. Case Keeter, I think someone's going to offer him a bit more money. I think he might leave. And I think I think the Vikings last year, I'll be honest, I don't think they were all in. I don't think the staff were all in. I think he played well. Yeah. But I got, I always got the feeling that they really would have liked Sam Bradford to be playing if he, if he could have just He's got, just been cleared as he, well to he, play. I, I think they would have liked him to be on the field. Obviously, Ke Keenan was brilliant and he, did, you know, he was absolutely fantastic. But it does feel a little bit one season wondery, whether it is or not. I don't know. Um, I said again, go after Cousins would make sense to them. The money, you know, if, if you're talking maybe thirty million dollars a season, now that's where you're looking at for him. So, are they willing to do that? And is he willing to take a bit less to go on a, a championship team? But I don't think they're trying to clear the quarter. No, no. I think what's happened is 
they got they had a guy who got t- suffered a you know, historic injury, so they had to cover for that by by giving the trade away to, for Sam Bradford, and because you had those two, you had to go and find a veteran. So they went and got Case Keenum on a one-year deal, and he played well. So the stars it's aligned. It's we're mad, all, isn't it? We're all three are just out of contract at the same time, and they're, they're going to have to make the decision what they do. The one thing with the Bridgewater stuff that I find quite interesting is that nobody really knows what Bridgewater's going to be like. And, you know, the Vikings, no one's got tape on Bridgewater because he hasn't played. But the Vikings have had him training since October, so they'll feel comfortable with their decision on him. Yeah. Whether anybody else is willing to pay Teddy Bridgewater right now, I'd guess probably not. Of those three, I think Sam Bradford's the best. Yeah, maybe. Um, but not the high ceiling. No, I think he is. I think I think his ceiling is bigger than Bridgewater. I just think someone else is going to want though Brad. Someone will want Bradford, and someone will want Keenan, and give them a lot of money. And the Vikings, I think, the difference between all three isn't that much. Where we might as well keep Teddy, will probably be the cheapest, and then and then go from there and work it out. Okay, we'll move on then. It's at Miles underscore Tarbox. Hi Miles. Uh, which of last year's top draft picks needs a big season, Steve? Yeah, looking back at the top ten last year, if you look at it. A lot of them did really, really well, but the three who you could probably argue didn't, maybe four, Pat Mahomes sat, we'll come to in a minute, but Mike Williams, wide receiver, going to the Chargers, Corey Davis, wide receiver, went to Tennessee, John Ross, wide receiver, went to Cincinnati. Injuries plagued all three of those, didn't they? And when you spend the, a first round pick on a guy, you need him to be producing by year two. You know, and I understand again, injuries were a factor. And by the end of the season, Corey Davis like was starting to come into form. The other two we didn't. Yeah. Did he catch two against the Patriots? Yeah, didn't and we didn't see, but we didn't see a lot of the others. John Ross, if he gets on the field, will change that defense. Sorry, that offense in Cincinnati because he's, he's, he's absolutely rapid, yeah, and he, he'll open up holes and stuff. So probably one of those. Three. I think, I think the Bengals really, really, really need John Ross to have a good season because without him, they are they look just another. Do you think they've got the quarterback back to hit him? Even if he doesn't hit him as often, he'll he'll open up holes for everyone else. You know that. That's what that's what, kind of what he was there for. He was there to take the top off and it maybe one or two big throws a game and just open up space for everybody else to work out underneath. You know, they've got a good tight end again if he can stay healthy. They've got, you know, Joe Mixon's a very, very good running back if they can get him involved. So I think the Bengals really, really need him to do it because there's no wide receiver worth taking really in free agency, I don't think. Maybe Alan Robertson, it depends on if he stays in Jacksonville. Maybe Sammy Watkins, other than that, there's not much there. The draft is a bit rubbish for wide receivers. So if the Bengals don't get much from John Ross, they could they could be another year where their offense just stutters again. Yeah, I think um, before we come on to Patrick Mahomes, and I, I, I've picked Mike Williams as mine. You know, yep. he didn't start a game until week six, obviously. Um, but eleven receptions, ninety five yards, no touchdowns, only twenty three times he was targeted. Eighth, uh, eighth most catches on that Chargers offense. Um, they'll be a little bit disappointed with him this season and his production. I think they're going to need him to step up now. Listen, they've got they've got some good pass catches and they've got a good quarterback. Um, but I think there was a lot of people before the draft last season that thought Mike Williams was the top talent in the wide receivers category and he's not produced like a top talent should even in his first year even with those problems yeah. uh, so for me it's Mike Williams but I agree with all all the players that you've mentioned let's talk about uh, Patrick Mahomes then obviously I don't think he necessarily needs one because I think this was the plan he just needs to be good yeah well he's a rookie quarterback so Kansas City are going to have to deal with everything that it comes with you know playing a rookie quarterback. It very, very rarely goes amazingly well all the time. You know they do, they can do okay and they can do fine. Some of them get into the playoffs, but it's very. I don't think they win play. They don't win the Super Bowl very often or if ever. Um, Kansas City is a weird one for me because they've kind of hit the reset button in recent weeks with a team that probably didn't need to have the reset button hit on it, but that's where they are. You know, I I think I was never that big on my home coming out of the draft. I think as as ta- as his physical skill sets there. I just didn't know we had the, the you know the, the mental capacity. I think that kind of let him down. But by all accounts, if you read things that people around that team say, they liked him and he looked okay in the one game he finished at the end of the season. But I agree, Kansas City they're in a Super Bowl window because they've made the playoffs the last couple of years. So it's very rare for the team in that window to bin their quarterback and go again. So there's huge pressure on him because if they if they you know slump. And Alex Smith does pretty well in Washington, and all the questions will be asked yeah. already. Like, you know, we gave up a guy who was getting us constantly to, you know, the wild the divisional round. He won a playoff game, and then all of a sudden we're we're tanking that for another guy. Bearing in mind, players around him are not getting younger, 
I think there could be huge pressure on him if it goes yeah, wrong. And I think you're right. And I like Smith as a quarterback. I just think there is a ceiling to where he can get to. I think um, John Harbour was it for the 49ers knew that as well by t- by keeping Kaepernick in there for the Super Bowl run when they got to the uh, Super Bowl. But Jim Harbour, Jim. isn't it? Apologies. Um, so I think that's probably your early warning sign because that's what you're talking five odd years ago now when Smith was yeah, basically and, and two, two teams have given up on him. Two playoff teams have given up on him. When so he's had a winning record. So there must be something that people don't like. It's kind of the Tyrod Taylor, sh- you know yeah. what I mean? The people there see something they don't like. So yeah, but I think there's huge pressure on Mahomes because that's a team that has been competing to get in the Super Bowl every year, being a playoff team. If he fails, I think he might get one year. And if it fails again, then you look like... you know. Look- Is Reed's job attached to Mahomes now? Um, a little bit, yeah, maybe perhaps, but you know they've they've changed general manager. You know, they changed general manager after that pick. So that G, that GM has got no loyalty to Pat Mahomes whatsoever. John Dorsey picked him, and now he isn't there anymore. So Andy Reid, the thing with Andy Reid is if if someone if he got sacked, he would have a job the next yeah, day. But I think it must be because he must he would definitely have had a say in that pick. There's no way he they would have just chosen him. He, if that would have happened, I think he would have resigned. Yeah. If they had made him change quarterback, so. Yeah, I think it is. I think I think that's a fair point. I think if he fails, like if he's a real serious failure, he might say, as good as Andy Reid is as a coach, is he in the Alex Smith range of where is that? <laughs> so far he is, and he's proved he can, he'll get you there. Yeah, but yeah. can he get you to the what one Super Bowl appearance? I think it is for the Eagles with McNabb a long time ago, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. After there's a, there's and a you know his disciples have now won a Super Bowl as well. A lot of them, yeah. Um, so there we go. And with the franchise that he tried to win a Super Bowl with for a long time. Okay, uh, at NFL in Wales. Stay. If the Patriots don't resign Nate Solder, where should he go? <laughs> Whoever gives him the most money, maybe I don't know. What's his What's his game plan? I know that he's got strong ties to the Boston area and stuff. I think he ultimately resigns with New England. I think he doesn't want to go, and I think they'll work something out. Teams I think who are good, who could do with a left tackle. Houston need a left tackle. They haven't got really got anyone there. That didn't work out for them. Colts. Yep. Yeah, Bengals. I've got the Giants. I think. I think that was a blip last year. I don't think they're going to be that bad. Where they're going to be, you know, I think that was a blip of injuries, McAdoo, really bad coaching, <laughs> and a lot of things. You know, a lot of things going wrong. They seriously could do with offensive lineup. They've got nothing going on there. And Cincinnati, who give up one of the best left tackles in the league for a young kid to play, and they, they just haven't it hasn't worked. So Andrew Whitworth, who was excellent in LA, was probably sitting back laughing his head off. So he, Nate Solder could end up there as well. There's a, a lot of teams need a left tackle. I, ult- I don't think but ultimately Patriots. Yeah, I don't think he's great. I think he's good, but I think ultimately he'll stay in England. How much should give up for something like an eight or that? In terms of oh, it's hard. I think there's so much cap room going on. Some average players got a lot of money last year. Your team give a lot of average players a lot of money, and it kind of work for them. I think if there's, I think if he hits free market, he could he could get big big money that he probably wouldn't justify. But someone will be going. I've got all this money that I need to spend, and I've got no left tackle. Let's just pay him a lot of money because. We don't want to be in an Andrew Luck situation where our mm. quarterback, or Russell Wilson, where our quarterback is just getting his, his ass kicked every single week. Let's just give him an extra five million that he does it because ultimately, it's there. What do you think about his his actual skill set? Because Brady's the best in the business. Yeah. Now, does he make them look exactly? That's what I'm going with. Does he make these guys? Is he gonna? Is Brady gonna get sold or paid? And is he gonna perform at the same level? Yeah. Um, I think he will get him paid, yeah, I think, and I think he'll be by the Patriots. Um, I think he's good, I think he's very, very good, I think he's actually above average, you know. To be a top 10 probably uh, left tackle in the league is very, very valuable, because there's a lot, a lot of bad ones, and like I say, that... that do you think he is a top 10, or do you think I think he's around, I think he is, no, I think he, yeah, I think he's got the skill set, but it's, it's, again, it's hard to know. He fits into that scheme well. The last thing New England need is another, is changing their left tackle and Tom Brady's 40. Because mm. if, you, if you get that wrong, then you kind of waste the year, and before you know it, he's probably got two or three years left, so why bother? I imagine Tom Brady's desperate for, for, for him to resign, I ultimately think he probably will. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, okay, at B Heil 1, 2, 3, uh, would the Eagles have won the Super Bowl with Carson Wentz? I'll answer this one first. Yes, I do believe that they would have. Uh, I, think, I thought the scheme was fantastic all season long. Um, whether 
the championship game against the Vikings would have been as easy. I'm not 100% sure, but I do think they'd have had too much for us. I don't think the Vikings were expecting what Nick Foles brought to the table there. Yeah. And I think that might have been the hardest game for them. And our Viking, my Vikings defence might have been able to do a little bit better because they had a little bit of tape yeah, on wins. I but I, I think, do ultimately think they would have won it. I think they'd have beat Atlanta more conventionally than Nick Foles did. I think Nick Foles, it was 15-10, wasn't it? I think, I think the Eagles would have lit the Falcons up. But that was the point, I think, and I think they would have beat the Patriots having got there because I think they had the better team. The issue is the middle game. Would they have beat the Vikings because the Vikings were stunned by what happened? They were not expecting those deep plays, those double moves. Now, if Carson Wentz is fit, you will be expecting those. That you mean you wouldn't have game planned for having watched Nick Foles struggle so much against Atlanta? They the game plan was you know stop the run, you know get get in his face, get physical, blah blah blah. And he just come and blew you, blew her away. So I think, I think they would have been better than the Falcons. I think they would have been better than the Patriots. Would they beat the Vikings? Maybe. So I don't know. I think that would have been a tough one. I think, I think the Vikings might have got him. I think they, could they would have just played their normal game with sixteen weeks of tape on Carson Wentz, rather than being completely shock and awed by what Nick Foles threw at them. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> so Lewis Sullivan, uh, which underdog team do you see having a run at the Super Bowl next season and why? And it kind of nicely bookends the show actually because it's very similar to the very first question, which was the worst to first question in the division. So, stay. which underdog team do you see having a run at the Super Bowl next season see, and why? See, I think I think if you put Watson on the Texans, they're no longer an underdog hmm. because I think they I think they showed last year they can beat anyone. You know, they, they had a wonderful game against Seattle. They blew teams away. So I'm kind of going to dis, discount them a little bit. Are the Chargers underdogs? Mm, yeah, I suppose they are. I think the Chargers could be really, really good. I've been saying this for five years, so it's about yeah. time they freaking did it. Yeah. But I think and two years removed... the Chargers make the playoffs? No. Because the underdogs? Then I pick the Chargers because... If they find a kicker, just go and <laughs> find a fucking kicker. Go whoever on the Janikowski's free, he's about 50. Go and sign in because honestly, if they could kick field goals, they would have been, they'd have won that division last year. The beginning of the year when they, you know, it just absolutely killed them. Their field goal woes absolutely destroyed them. So I think the Chargers, if they, if they can sort that out, they've got the quarterback, they've got the receivers, they've got the running back, they've got the defence, they've got, you know, I think Joey Bosa is destined to be the best pass rusher in the league within the next couple of years. So I think they could be really good. Just go go and find a kicker. Find uh, someone who can kick the ball through the sticks. I am going to go. If uh, we've, we've just, on camera, decided that the rule of being an underdog is not making the playoffs and therefore I'm picking the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, that big underdog. Well, listen, they didn't make the playoffs. You were the one who said it. We defined the rules. They're your team. You should be happy about this. Yeah, fantastic. I think they've got the easiest way, route to winning the division because I think the Vikings, right now, right here, right now, you don't, don't have a quarterback. Have a quarterback. <laughs> you do not know what's happening with that. And Aaron Rodgers is, you know, the best quarterback in the league. So for me... I would be shocked if they didn't make a Super Bowl run next season. I know, so it's about time. But then equally, you know, they do have to play the Vikings a couple of times and he could get injured again. Could happen, you know, your, your thug defence could break his collar. Thugs, <laughs> late, thugs. Late, come on. If late late hits. If thugs, we'd have killed Foles. <laughs> you yeah. That's mad, Danny. You couldn't you, get near you, him. You, 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 you smashed Aaron Rodgers' face and you couldn't touch Nick Foles. <laughs> <laughs> what a mad season uh, listen thank you very much for supporting us all season long if you've enjoyed the videos please like the video don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and of course we will be back next week with the free agency prediction so keep your eyes and ears peeled and if you've not already check out Steve's show this week uh, where he looks at some more questions what did you talk about on that show Steve? yeah it was all draft based stuff so we were looking at the quarterbacks who's going to be you know who's going to boom who's going to bust any, any late round sleepers that kind of thing so if you're kind of into the draft you're getting ready for the draft hopefully fingers crossed I might have helped you out with a couple of sleepers to keep your eye on okay well thanks very much Steve thanks very much for watching once again and we'll see you next time on Cover 2 TV